So what I showed today were just a couple of simple drills to just get us into the mindset that I want to capture the hips and then I want to capture the shoulder stroke head and it's a progressive battle of territories, gaining territory. First I had to get past the legs. So the first one where we went and shot them out of the way, that gave me access to the hips already. I could see the gate opening. And by moving the knees away, I was able to capture the hips. Immediately, you have to expect that they're going to start framing, and the next stage is that he starts shrimping away, shrimping away. Now I'm in a worse position than I was because it's very hard to, once you start putting in the moves to defend, it's very hard to capture the head. So as soon as he puts his arm, because that's the first thing he's going to do, I get rid of them, then I'm trying to gain territory by capturing the head and shoulders. That was a very, very simple, stripped down, pared down version. If you want to know the name, this is the bullfighter class. The next thing we did was, um, what was the next thing that we did? Um, bullfighter. Set up. Yes, it's set up. This is called butterfly guard, all right, or, or sitting up guard, or whatever. And usually you have a different set of problems because he has his hands much more accessible to you, which and his feet can hook around yours, and you're under his control. So you want to be swift, and you want to make sure that when you are, you're getting your, again, it's the same uh, methodology. I'm getting past his legs first. This method relies on upper body control and lower body control. As we're I switch position, I've got rid of his legs already. And then I can capture the hips, and it's the same methodology. And then finally, we're in a bit deeper. We've stepped in, we're controlling the leg and the hips, so he cannot get his legs to twine around mine. We're going past, and I've got past the hips now. Bang, and now it's the second stage where we're trying to pass the drop. So now we're going to look at once we pop the video, once we get there. Very simple drill, everybody knows this. We're going to start in the best position possible in side control. Now look at the details again. <clears throat> My chest is on this chest. <coughs> when we teach kids class, for some reason the kids don't want to put their chest on chest, or they don't know what a chest is. They do this. <laughs> All of them. Almost, and then we go around picking them up and plopping them on here. Please don't be like a child and start off side control like this. Because I will go around and pick you up. Unless you're bigger than me, I'll get way to do it. I'm going to clock you on there, okay? Chest on chest. It's side control. You're meant to pin them down. Okay, maybe they've been brought too politely. <laughs> Middle class era of all of them. So, we're here. Chest on chest. Now, let's have a look at what my legs are doing. My legs are splayed apart and I'm on my knees. I will spin around so you can see. So, I, I, I cover a large surface area because he's going to be rocking around trying to push me off and I want to be very, very stable here. Okay, there are other leg variations which we'll hopefully we'll cover today. So legs, chest, now let's look at the arms. One arm, which we call the far arm, will go under his armpit. The other arm, which we call the near arm, goes under his neck. Right? And there are various permutations of how you hold. I think the simplest one is you clap your hands together and you drag them in. Now, finally, your head. Don't have your head up here because he will find a way to wedge underneath the frame. Okay, you want to avoid that by tucking in, your chin is connected to his shoulder. Now if he tries to weave his hand in to try and pull your head off, it's harder, there's not a lot of space. And that's just your basic side control hold. You could set in, very good people could literally be in there for hours and you'd be going, hur, hur, trying to get off, and you can't. Right? Obviously, that clear matches in five minutes. Alright, so we're going to start here, his arms are free, your legs are wide, chest on chest please. Okay, now your arms, one underneath, one under the head, clap. Bringing everything together, chin tucked in. Now ask your partner to just move around, see if you can just wiggle around. Just to see how tight it is. It should be fair, you should find it fairly good control position for the time being at least. Did I explain myself enough, especially for the newer people? Do you want to see any de details again before you try it out for yourself? No? Everyone okay? All right, one, two, three. But let's go back to the uh, passes that we do. In Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I managed to pass. Here, passing being, I've got past his legs, he was using a guard, no, he's not using a guard anymore. And I managed to hold this position for three seconds, I get points for it. Alright? So, three points if you ask me. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, but, if you are, just to reiterate a point, if there's no guard involved and I just ran around and I managed to get this. It's never going to happen, by the way. But I managed to get to position, and the whole counting my three seconds, there's no points because I haven't completed the technique or shown skill to get here, i.e., passing the guard. I've simply managed to end up landing. 
that's kind of like a, for you guys who want to compete, just be aware. Because I think with Charlie's fight right. last year, there was controversy of whether he had passed a guard in order to get this because the referee didn't pass. Anyway, uh, let's talk about this position again. Now, there's one thing I did talk about, and what you can do with your shoulder on his head. So if you come around to the front so you can see, don't skew the camera. There's different ways you can grip it out. I like this one because um, it gets me used to nogi, basically. I don't need to know that there's clothes here to know the certain purpose. But for some people, they like to grab underneath the gi here, or they grab here, they, for a bit of security. Personal choice. If there's no gi involved, grab my own hands. Now, this is good enough. I can secure this for maybe a few seconds. But what will really help you is if you can see my shoulder there, use your shoulder dig underneath, make him point away. And Wayne can't turn back into me, which actually weirdly affects him moving his hips. So if you can turn your legs into me, it's, it's very hard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. if you turn your legs into me, it's easier, but when the head is facing away, so you can try this with your opponent. Use your shoulder and really don't just go like this, because it's quite hard to it's quite easy to resist to just dig your chin in there. You go underneath and then drive across, make him look away, and then ask your partner to just move a little bit. And you'll find this, if you'll get some feedback, you'll find it's more restrictive for you, isn't it? It's harder for you to do what you want to do. So we're going to try that for 20 seconds and then we'll go back to doing a base submission. One, two, three, let's go. So let's move on from Let's do something cool from there. Let's borrow Dean. A head here, feet there, so stuff like So uh, I think the best view is this one. Right, so we're in this strong side so control using my shoulders to make him point away. But I want to do something, and I, I, I like something called the bread cutter choke. It's a very, very basic way of creating submission, but it's not all that commonly used because people think it's, it's too basic. Surely he wouldn't fall for it. But if you look at the steps that make us go there, um, you can sort of use any of these steps as pain infliction stroke control. Right. So anyway, let's, let's look at the steps. From here, I have to relinquish my grip on him. That's the number one thing. So to do this, I still keep my chest, don't be a kid. Keep your chest on top. Bring the arm that's controlling his head, because that's kind of the one that will do the least damage if you're, like, if, if you're gonna release one of them. And bring it over. Yeah, I'm controlling his far shoulder here. This hand now has a job to do, it goes around to the hip. I still have effectively control of his shoulder and hip here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to walk around to this position. But there's a way I want you to do it. I want you to do it so you kind of give him a bit of space to free his arm. See, he doesn't want his arm trapped. But even if you don't know any jiu-jitsu, Dean, this, this is not a comfortable thing. You instinctively feel your arm is not in a... So you kind of give them room. As soon as I'm free, you under back. Here. And you capture his arm. Take the arm out. This is very hard, isn't it? Yeah. So everyone got this idea? I'll go over it many times. So now, look at my fingers. They're pointing up towards his head. I'm going to use those fingers to grab the collar here. All right? Now what we're going to do is, because you kind of walked over his shoulder here, we're going to walk back again to our original side position. And you're going to find you're in this sort of weird, tangled arm um, position. What you want to do is just give yourself a little space by pulling up here. So he's on his side. Now this arm has a job to do. We're going to show you two versions of this one. The first version, the thumb in starts here. You whip it over, and you bring it down and you cut like a knife so your elbow goes to the ground, but so does the rest of your body. You slide down, you power down, and you pull. The second version, in this version, is that you're here, drag the arm across, until you get to the gi, then the, sh the elbow becomes involved, you drop the elbow to the ground, you drop your hips to the ground, you're pulling on both sides of the collar, and you're going to get a tap. You're basically getting that cutting action across the neck. So, it's quite a lot of moves there, more than I thought. I thought, oh, I'll just do the bread cut, it's easy. We're going to show you all the detail. This one, I've got a video, so you can come close if you want to. So, in normal time, whole thing again. Put it up again. You can even capture this first, then roll up. Notice I did a little 
a switch there as well um, because I'm using everything I can to create as much torsion, torque, tension and merge two words together <laughs> as possible. Okay, it takes a little practice and I'll go around and help you. Um, are you happy with your partners or do you want to swap around guys? Yeah? Then you have your partners. Okay, one, two, three, let's we come further. Great, fantastic. Now, as it captures my <coughs> so we've got the hip and then you go around, it just captures my arm here. That's fine, he's got that. And then he squares up again. Any moment, if he raises his chin, I'm out of there. This alone. And this forms the basis of much of our escaping methodology we call framing, using the strong part of your uh, bones and skeletons to escape from position. So I want you to all try this again. So this, we're doing this, your partner's going to do this, the technique completely legitimately as we've done before. So it's like here again. I'm doing the best I can, but that's the routine. Here, I get on my arm here. He's like, oh, this arm is useless now. And he squares up, he's about to put the, put the thumb in for the choke, but he makes the mistake of just raising his head up a little bit. Now, all I need to do. And this gives you the basis of learning how to escape using frames alone. I'm not using strength at all. It's just the leverage and the use of my um, <coughs> skeletal system. And from here, uh, you know, I would just get to my knees to escape. If you want to be fancy, you can start attacking for arm bars if you are that adventurous. <laughs> Good luck with that. Let's do it with an angle. So you can see. So, I immediately know what's going to happen. He's either going to go north south, he's going to push for this, this bread cup choke. Yeah. So I'm getting my framing hand ready. He's, he releases this arm to start choking, and I start framing already. And I'm doing what I can to get out. It's just one arm movement. Yes? yes. So now we should have an attack, we have an escape. Alright? One, two, three, let's go.